Hello and welcome back to this video series on setting up my metadata driven processing framework for Azure Data Factory in your own tenant from scratch. This is part seven and what we're going to do in part seven is add some worker pipelines to our Azure Data Factory. So just to recap, in our Visual Studio deployment steps, we are up to number 15. We've published the core pipelines for the processing framework to our data factory using the PowerShell script. And if I look in my data factory, you can see we have everything in this vanilla Azure tenant or what was a vanilla Azure tenant. So it's good that we've got those core pipelines there, but we now need to add some worker pipelines so the processing framework actually has something to do. At this point, the framework is there and, and we could run it, but there's, there's not actually anything that's gonna happen. So I'm just gonna add some worker pipelines that are going to be very simple weight activity pipelines, just so the processing framework has something to do when we tell it to run. So, the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use the same PowerShell deployment approach that we use for step 12. But this time, instead of just deploying the core pipelines for the framework, I'm going to ask that PowerShell to deploy the worker pipelines that I use in the development environment. The same worker pipelines that also exist in the GitHub repo if you choose to use them just to get this set up. So what you'll see is in the data factory folder of the solution in pipeline, you have the, the core pipelines that have already been deployed. And then we have these workers and each of these workers, as I've said, it's a very simple pipeline with typically one weight activity and that's being parameterized from a, a parameter that's passed at the pipeline level called wait time. So I'm just going to get those worker pipelines deployed into that same data factory environment, just so we've got something to do. So the way this PowerShell script works is you may have noticed that it takes in a path to uh, another JSON file. And that JSON file contains the information about what we want the PowerShell to deploy. And when we did this previously, it was using the proc framework components JSON file, which if we have a look at, it's got the link services, the data set and things in it that we need and would expect for those core pipelines. So all I'm going to do to get my workers up there is copy that JSON file, paste a, a new version of it into my folder. And I'm just gonna call this workers. And for my workers JSON file, we don't want to deploy any triggers. We don't want to deploy any data sets and we don't want to deploy any link services. What we do of course want to deploy is the pipelines. So the, I think the quickest way we can do that is if we just go to the folder for this Visual Studio solution, I'll go to data factory and I'll get those pipelines from there. Um, let's just get a list of them. So all of our pipelines, let's just get the pipeline names. Um, let's actually just filter that as well because we of course don't want the, the core pipelines. I'm just cheating here to, uh, to get a list of uh, to get a list of those file names just to put into the JSON basically. So let's get those, let's copy that, and let's put that into here. Now because Visual Studio knows this is a JSON file, when I paste in something, it, uh, it gets a bit cocky and tries to put in the own, its own formatting for me. So I'm just gonna undo that second step that it applied automatically, just so I've got that raw list. Uh, then we do want the pipeline prefix. Let's try to be clever again. Give me characters that I don't necessarily want. 
pipelines and yeah let's just close the strings in the array I do love the alt vertical edit that we get uh, it's been clever now by not putting the last comma on for me I'll, I'll accept that one good um, you might notice that in the solution we have these subfolder under pipeline. Those are actually just logical folders within the solution. They're not folders that actually exist in the directory structure. So this workers.json file is now what we can use with the PowerShell to drive the deployment of those workers instead. So line 26 in the PowerShell, I'm just going to copy that. And I'm now just going to change this to workers. And let's run that. So it'll go through the same motions like it did when it's deploying the core pipelines, but this time just doing the workers instead. He says. So what we'll get is some worker pipelines appearing under here momentarily. Good stuff. Okay, so if I now just refresh again on my data factory, we now have some workers. Let's just have a quick look at them. As I say, one wait activity. We've got a pipeline parameter called wait time. We've got a default value. That pipeline parameter is actually just being passed to the wait activity. So the framework now has something to do basically. Good. That concludes part seven of this video series. Join me again very soon. Thank you.